So now we have a player damage functionality in our game and we have our scoring and cash management. Hey guys, welcome back to another Bigger Games tutorial. Today we are going to be finally going over player damage and enemy scoring. What you see here is what will be the result of today's tutorial. We have our points, if you can see it in the bottom left hand corner. I added a money and a score variable. And then we have enemy damage that is applied. And you can see the health going down each time. We don't have the animations yet, we will add those later. but. We will have the damage element added today. So let's hop back to where we left off last time and get started. And here's our scene where we left off last time. Um, for the FPS kit that we have been using for this series, uh, if you've been following along, you know that it was in JavaScript. And when I was implementing a lot of the scripts, it's very difficult to implement some of the variables and access some of the variables in between scripts due to the way that Unity compiles the scripts because they will compile the C sharp scripts first and then the Java, JavaScript scripts. So any variables that you have in JavaScript, you cannot access through the C sharp scripts without um, doing kind of a hack. And I didn't want to do that because I know a lot of people that are following these are beginners and it would complicate things. So I have taken out all the JavaScript scripts and replace them with C sharp scripts. It is much easier to understand where the variables are accessing from one script to another. In the description field, I've added the new FPS kit. It's very easy to replace the old one. Just go to your player in your hierarchy and just delete the entire player and then import the new FPS kit that I have provided in the description. And when you import this, just add the player right back into the hierarchy. You can get started from where we are right now. I hope that makes it a lot easier on you guys. And I feel like C-sharp is a lot easier to understand and follow. So we're gonna be just doing C-sharp scripts for now so there's no confusion. So the first thing we're going to do is to add a point system to the game. And what we'll want to do here is go into our game management uh, object go into the game management script. So here we're gonna add a couple variables to hold the values of our score and our money since it will have a money inventory type system. And here we are going to put static int player score equals zero and static int player cash equals zero. Why we made these static in this case, what a static variable is, is a variable that belongs to the class and not the instance of an object. So when we want to access these variables, we can call out the class in other scripts. We don't have to have an instance of this class to, to access these variables. So this makes it easier to access these when you only need one set of the variable in the game and you can access them from anywhere. You don't have to call an instance. And now that we have our two variables that will hold our data for the score in the cache, let's write a function that will draw it to the screen. We're going to use this function void on GUI. And what this does is automatically draws what you put in this function on the screen and we'll call it automatically from Unity. And the first thing we need to do for this is define a skin. We have a, and we already have a skin that we can use. We will add that in a second. Um, and then GUI style, this is the style that the characters will be printed in. And this is inside the MySkin variable under the custom styles array at array location zero. And that's what this is. So we need to define what MySkin is. We haven't done that yet up here. So I'm going to put public GUI skin MySkin. And then we can reference that in the Unity editor. So I'm going to copy and paste these to save time, but next we want to draw the labels on the screen. And to do this, we use a function called GUI.label, and that accepts a rectangle, and the rectangle is the location on the screen where you will put this. So 40 is the X coordinate where it's starting, height negative 80 is the Y coordinate, and then the ending coordinates of 160. And this will put this in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. And we have score, and then after that we want to put the player score 
that we defined up here into that as well. So it shows our score in real time. And then we'll do the same for our cache. I just put a dollar sign, player cache. And up here, I forgot to capitalize the S. And next we'll wanna create a function that we can access to add points to our player score and player cache. So I'm gonna make a public function here, public void add points. And I'm going to give it a value that we can put through the function. So here we are going to add player score plus equals point value. And the same for player cache. And the difference between player score and player cache will be the cache will subtract when you buy weapons off the wall and the score will stay the same throughout the entire game. And because we want to access this function through the class and not through an instance, we will put public static here for the same reason that we put static in front of the other variables. So go back to your scene and in the game management, under the game management script, we have the my scan. We need to tell it which GUI skin to use. There should only be one in the project, double click that. And now when we press play, it should show up on the screen in the bottom left hand corner. So now we have money and score. And next we need to tell it how to increment those when we get hits and kills. So open up your enemy controller script, which will be on the zombie prefab. You can click on the script and it'll automatically open. And we want to tell it to add a score when it gets hit. So down in the apply damage function, we want to tell it to add points. So first I'm going to define a variable that has the value of the points. Point value. I'm gonna give it 10. So now when we apply damage to the enemy, we want to give the player points. And we don't want the player to get points if the enemy is dead or on the floor and we shoot it because it'll still do a blood effect and this will be called, but we want to do it inside of this if function, which says if it is not dead yet, then let's access the static variable that we created. You can just type game management dot add points and point value. So this will send the point value over to the game management script and add points to our static variables. So now if we press play and go into our scene, we should get points when we hit an enemy. So you can see our points went up to 30 and our cache went up to 30. So now that we have the points working, we can add player damage from the enemies. And to do that, first we are going to calculate how far the enemy is away from the player so we can tell it when to start thinking about attacking because we will have a animation that plays for the attack and we want the damage to be applied when um, the animation hits the player or when it appears to hit the player. So we're gonna set a timer for the attack and apply the damage when it's close to the player for a certain period of time. And inside the update function where we have the if statement, if alive or if not is dead, we are going to calculate the distance. And that can be done by using the vector3.distance function. And the two points we are going to use are transform dot position, that is the position of the enemy, and the player position. And that will return a float value. So I'm going to put a variable up here, public float time to attack. And here I am going to put if distance is less than three, we are going to start our attack timer. And we will increment this by the time.delta time. And then I'm going to add an else if attack timer is greater than zero. We are going to decrease the attack timer by twice the speed that it increases in. And what this does is if we are outside of the range of three, then we are going to decrease the attack timer until it is below zero and then set it equal to zero to reset the attack timer because we'll want to reset it if we run away and they come back. And that will take care of our timer. So we need to tell it when to apply damage to the player. And to do that, I am going to create a function void 
attack. And here we will have an if statement, if attack timer is greater than time to attack, then we are going to apply damage. And here we will have a sound to indicate that the player got hit, so we won't forget to add a sound later. So if we're ready to attack, we want to set the attack timer back to zero. So next, I am going to add a function that tells us when the collision of the enemy and the player occurs, and this function is called onCollisionState. And this will be called every frame that the collider of the enemy and the collider of the player are interacting with each other. So, in this function, we have if collision info, which is what is passed to this function, and that is what it collides with. If collision info dot game object dot tag equals player, which is the tag of our player object, then we want to call the attack function that we have. And when that function tells us that we are ready to attack, we can send a message to the player to call the player damage, which is a function that calls the player damage function of the collider. So if you're wondering why we are doing this, because we want to call this when we're in contact with the player. When we collide with the player, it will call this function. We need to change this function to a bool and tell it when it is okay to apply the damage to the player. So in the if function, if attack timer is greater than time to attack, which means that we can now apply damage to the player, I'm going to return true. And if not, return false. So when it calls that function and it's ready to apply damage, it will return true and we will call the function send message upwards and player damage will apply the damage to the player. Third function is the send message options, which just means that it has to have this player damage function in the object that we're colliding with or it will throw an error. So now let's go over to our player damage function and see what's going on there. Inside the player damage new script, you will find the player damage function that we have here. And you can see we have one, one input, it's the damage, and it will apply the damage to our hit points for us and calculate if we should be dead or not. So now if we press play and we go next to a zombie, it will hurt us by 20. And if we do that enough, and we can control how long it takes for them to hurt us, um, it will take away all of our health and we will die. So now we have a player damage functionality in our game and we have our scoring and cash management. So next time we will be jumping in to putting our board animations up. I know you guys have been asking when we're gonna do that. We're gonna do our board animations in the next tutorial and we'll follow that one up, implementing the mystery box into our scene and throwing the guns on the wall where you can buy the guns. And then we will continue through the series until we have a complete clone of Call of Duty Zombies. If this video helped you out, remember to subscribe and hit the like button, it helps us out a lot. And it tells us that you're interested in keeping the series going. And if you have any suggestions or implementations that you want to see in the game, let us know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching guys, see you next time.